Hi, happy Mother's Day. I hope you're enjoying your day either with your family in real life or virtually, but it is a day to celebrate women. And our, our lesson today is going to be about women, but the scripture that I'm using to introduce it was actually about a man, and that man was Jabez. And you know, a few years ago, there was the book written on the prayer of Jabez, and it was really a popular thing uh, in the church. A lot of people read the book. You heard a lot of preachers preach on um, the prayer of Jabez. A lot of lessons were taught on it. And not so much do we hear about it now, but I want to go back and revisit it. In First Chronicles, the fourth chapter, in Chronicles, First Chronicles is in the Old Testament, and you would actually have to go back to verse 9 and 10. 9 just gives a little um, background on Jabez's birth. But it's verse 10 that I really want to pay attention to. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. One scripture, which was the whole crux of everything about Jabez, and here we have had books and uh, preached on him and series done about him. But what was he actually asking? He was asking God to broaden the borders of his life, of his ministry. In other words, he was saying he wanted nothing more and nothing less than what God wanted for him. He was willing to wade on out into the water, so to speak. He was throwing himself entirely into the river of the will of God, the power of God, and God's purpose for his life. And he was actually asking for God to give him more, give him more opportunity to work for him, give him more things to do and to empower him to do them and do them successfully. And so I want to use that scripture as a basis to actually talk about three women in the Bible, um, one in the New Testament, two in the Old Testament. Uh, and then I'm going to, after we talk about these individual women, I'm going to go to the Proverbs 31 woman just for a bit. But the first woman I want to talk about is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And if you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will hear her story. But she was a very young person. Um, I've heard different ages from, you know, ranging from the 12 to 15, 16 year old, uh, which was normal during that time period of time to become betrothed to a man. We do know that she was young. She was a virgin. Um, she found out all that was going to be happening to her from an angel. Now, I don't know about you, but just having an angel to suddenly appear um, in my room and start telling me how blessed and how, how highly favored I was from God would be a little disconcerting. But, you know, she even though she had questions, she was willing and obedient to the will of God. And if you read through the New Testament, all of the um, references that I can think of at time, and there may be one that I've missed or some, but it's always about Mary being the mother of Jesus. You know, she had other children. She had a family. She had a husband, Joseph, who supplied the position of an earthly father for, for Jesus, a godly man who was a good example for him. But when you read about Mary, it's always Mary, the mother of Jesus. From the time he was young and they went up to worship at the temple and thought he was with them and he wasn't. And, and you know, and then he tells him he had to be about his father's business. You know, it was always in relationship to him, even up to and including when he was on the cross. There was his mother right there with him. And, you know, she was a godly person. And even as a young person, she was highly favored. I have thought so many times of all the women of child rearing, you know, birthing age that lived when she did. What made her so special that God chose her 
it it couldn't have been her hair or her looks or her clothes she wore because God doesn't look on those things. Those things don't impress God. But it had to be the heart. You know, I'm a firm believer that we should not discount our young people. That it is very possible for young people to really, truly have a deep relationship, a deep walk with the Lord. And that the Lord can use them from a very young age. I myself got saved when I was very small. A very small girl. And I have loved the Lord. I haven't been perfect, but I've loved Him all my, all my heart. For all these years, you know, and I've, I've done many things, but I didn't become what I am right now when I turned 21 and then magically, you know, all of this happened. But my faith in God as a child was just tremendous. And so we cannot discount our young people. Mary was young. And yet even though her youth might would have disqualified her in many people's eyes. It did not disqualify her in God's eyes. In fact, the scripture says in Luke one twenty eight, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So girls out there, I don't care how old you are. You may be eight or nine years old. You can love the Lord and serve the Lord. And you can work for the Lord even at that age. 12, 13, 15, 18, 20. You're not too young to be used to the Lord. But you have to have a heart that hungers for the Lord. You know, I have a, a special friend that um, was part of our youth group and went to Teen Talent. And she and I are, are pretty active with each other on Facebook and back and forth. And she's reading the Bible through. Now, she was motivated on her own to do that. It wasn't necessarily what someone prodded her to do, but what the Spirit of the Lord is working through her. And I have seen such growth in her, not just because she started reading the Bible through, but as she grows and matures in her hunger for the Lord and her desire to be used of the Lord. So it's your heart that will bring you favor from God when your love is there for Him and when your desire is there to please Him. When just like Jabez, you know, when he said, um, broaden my coast, enlarge my coast, which we mean, means broaden my borders, expand me, God, make things bigger. And that thou hand might be with me. That is what all of the women that I'm going to talk to you about today, even though they were in different situations in life, different age groups in life, they all wanted to be used of God and for his glory and for his honor. The second person I want to talk to you about is in the Old Testament is Queen Esther. You know, when her story begins, she's not queen. There's a queen before her, Vashti. And she is put away in disgrace because she wouldn't follow a commandment of the king. And he was afraid he would look bad in the kingdom if he didn't do something about it. So Esther, when she finds herself in the position that she is in, she's not there because she coveted that position. Um, she was She didn't go seeking to be the queen. But when the word went out and the young uh, virgins were brought from all over the kingdom, she was one of the ones brought. She didn't have a choice. And, you know, things went pretty well. She was in um, seclusion and all the rituals that they went through to prepare these young girls to go to the king for a year. And when she went, she didn't go with um, a lot of enticements. She went and followed the directions of, of the man who was over the young women, the concubines, and, and she followed his directions, and she went in, and it said the king left her above all those, so much that she became the queen. And yet it wasn't a position she sought. And things were going really well until, of course, there was a, a, um, a rat in the house, I guess we could say. And Mordecai, the man who had raised her as his daughter, who was actually a kinsman, and both her parents had died when she was very, very young, 
and he had taken her into his household and raised her um, into his family. He sends word to her what's going on. She didn't even know about the death sentence that the, the children of Israel, the Jews, were under. And, you know, there's a little bit of back and forth between them about what to do or how to do. And she's trying to remind him that, you know, if she tried to approach the king and, and the king hadn't asked for her, I mean, she could be put to death. That was serious business there. And Mordecai said in um, the fourth chapter, uh, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? She was not there because she sought to be there. She didn't connive to be there. She didn't try to wiggle her way in. She was put there. And the man who had raised her as though she was his daughter, who had loved her as she was his daughter, said, Look, God's will is going to be done. If you don't follow God's path and God's will, you'll be destroyed. Your family will may be destroyed. But his will will not go down because of you. But who knows, who knows, but God has put you here right now, at this time, in this place, for this situation. Ladies, what about you? Girls, what about you? None of us that I'm aware of, nobody in their right mind, has asked for what we're all going through right now. But even in going through what we're going through, how blessed we are. If you've been a whining baby through this, you need to suck it up. Let me tell you something. We may be quarantined this, that, and the other, but you have lights, you have air, you have water, you have food. Thank you, Jesus, you have toilet paper. I've heard so much about that. And every time we go to a store, I think, oh, they got toilet paper. Maybe we need to get a roll. You know, we've been blessed. Even though it's different, it's not what we choose. It's not what we want. Suck it up, folks. We got to get through this together. And as children of God, we need to lead the way in a sweet spirit, in a positive attitude. And there is nothing too hard for God. Now, if you believe it, you've got to live it. And you've got to let it just pour out of you. And, and just exude all around you to the people around you. If you believe he's able, act like he's able. Walk like he's able. Talk like he's able. You know, this is what Mordecai says to, to, um, Esther. He says, girl, God raises up who he wants to raise up and he puts down who he wants to put down. And who knows? He may have slotted you right in this place. What you gonna do about it? So let me ask you ladies, what are you gonna do about it? You're homeschooling. Suck it up, girl. There's a lot of mamas and daddies and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and older brothers and sisters doing the same thing. Suck it up. Have a sweet attitude. And say, God, maybe this is a special time for me and my child or my children. Help me be like Jabez. God, my borders are getting enlarged. I sure wasn't looking for this kind of enlargement. But Lord, keep me from evil. Don't let me grieve you. God, grant me that I can walk the path that's set before me. Maybe you're teaching Sunday school and you never thought you would. Or perhaps you're part of the choir. Or maybe you're in a job you never thought you would be in. And sometimes you wonder. You know, I was um, transferred to a school in Harnett County after having been in middle school for years and years and years and years. And I started out as a high school teacher, loved high school, hated middle school until I made up my mind that I was going to be faithful, middle school or not. And then when my attitude changed, things got so much better. And I was faithful in middle school, and I did love those kids, and I tried to work with them and, and give them the best I had to give them. 
And then suddenly, the job that I had, which had been a special um, job by the governor of, of the state of North Carolina, 100 teachers had been chosen throughout the state to work, and we were supposed to be a new classification, we were supposed to be out of the classroom, but we were supposed to help teachers. And I was so excited and loved it so much and thought I would end my career there. And yet, after two years, the governor, you know, his time was up, a new governor came in, and the first, one of the first things he did was axe that program. And all that money and everything they had spent was, you know, it was over with. And I was sent to a school, and let me tell you, I had not been in high school at that point, probably something like 24 years. I had been in middle school, give or take a year or two. And when I went, it was in a different part of the county, and the culture was a lot different. And it was really rough. And every day that first year for, for I mean, it took me a good while to get a grip of myself and, and to really pray through this thing. I would say uh, the first month at least, maybe longer, maybe a little less. But every day I'd get in my car, and nobody at school ever saw me cry. But every day I'd get in my car and I'd be headed to the hospital where I taught aquatics. And all the way from one side of the county to the other side of the county, I'd cry and pray. And it, and it was like a daily prayer. You know, God, if I'm here, help me to accept it and help me to stay here. But Lord, if it's the stupidity of man that's put me here, will you get me out? And you know something? I was at that school for seven years. But once I worked through my personal anguish and and the lord helped me to help myself to get myself under control and realize i had some of the most wonderful opportunities to serve other people in that school to love on um, some teens that were at the bottom of the barrel and didn't get a lot of love um, to help new teachers and and to help them get set onto the path of teaching in a good, solid, foundational way. And I just had a lot of good things that came my way in a place I didn't expect to be. I don't know what part of you is where you don't want to be or didn't expect to be. But if you are a child of God, you need to get that thing to Him. And you need to say, Lord, not my will that thy will be done. If this is for me, if this is where I'm to be, if this is what I'm to do, if this is who I'm to interact with, if this is the situation, God, give me a peace and give me a direction. Jabez did not want to sin against God. He did not want to fall into evil himself. He didn't want to grieve the Lord. But he wanted to dive head first, whole body, into service to the Lord. So, folks, whatever, whatever you're in right now, homeschooling is just one thing. And I mentioned, I know I talked about it last week. But it's, for some of you, it is like a sentence worse than, worse than death. I have laughed, not at you, but at the memes I've seen on Facebook and I keep thinking to myself, boy, there are going to be a lot of people with different attitudes after this, at least for a little while. But I do feel your pain. Because as a professional educator with over 37 years in the classroom, I can tell you there are days that are not easy. There are weeks that are not easy. There are years that are not easy. But your attitude will help it be better. And so even in this time of homeschooling, your attitude will help and it will help with your children. And perhaps I'm talking to a pastor. You've never pastored in a situation like this before. You probably thought you'd pastored and seen every situation that there possibly was to see and to be a part of. And yet this is something that you have never faced. And unfortunately, there is not a book that you can go read where some pastor successfully managed his way through this and then he wrote a book and you can use it and refer to it. They're, they're just not out there because it hasn't happened before. 
you know, and so we have to realize that. So what we have to do is search our hearts to the Lord. And I know this lesson today is directed primarily toward women, but I'm really speaking to everyone. But let me get my focus back to you, moms, you wives, you daughters, um, you sisters. Do whatever in such a way that it will reflect on your Heavenly Father in a positive way. And even if the road you're walking is hard, walk it with grace. You know, I depend on God's grace and mercy every day. It says that they are new every day. And that's really good because every day I need a fresh bash of it. Ask God to give you grace and mercy as you walk through this season, as you try to be an obedient daughter to the Heavenly Father, and as you try to be spiritually in tune to what He would have you do. And, and the doors He opens to you. And even the ones that are hard. And even the ones that you wish, if you could wish it away, you would. Be faithful. Be a faithful child of God. Be an obedient child of God. I have found that most of the hard things in my life are the things that later on that I really, really can reach out and help and identify with other people. And then another Old Testament person is Deborah. She was a warrior prophetess. You know, prophecy or a prophet was an interpreter of the will of God from God to man. We're used to in the Old Testament male prophets, not so many female prophets, but Deborah was one. And in Judges chapter 4, she was judging the people and the Lord told her to go to Barak, who was the leader. In verses 6 through 8 in chapter 4, he says, Tell Barak to go to battle. And that if he went to battle, God would deliver the enemy to him. And so in verse 8, which I find very telling, And Barak said unto her, If thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. What a challenge to be such a woman of God, to be so filled with the Spirit of God that people would have that kind of attitude with about us. About us having such faith in our walk with the Lord that if the Lord spoke it and if we were willing to go, they believed so much that we loved the Lord and we listened to the Lord's voice and we we uh, were obedient to his calling that they would be willing to go because we were going. That's a lot, girls. That's a lot to ask of you. And it is true that everybody accepts the Lord for their own self and everybody walks their own salvation out. That is true. And everybody answers to God for their own self. That is true. But what a light on the hill you can be. What an example you can be that other people will say, Vicki Grady did it, or, or whoever, put your name in there, whoever I'm talking to. God was faithful to her. God led her and he will lead me. She cried every day after school that first month saying, God, get her out of there, but if not, help her. And, but if it was the stupidity of men, she threw that in, Lord, just in case. Get her out. And you didn't get her out. But looking back, she sees, oh, the stories I could tell you if I had time. Or the doors that were open, just one-on-one, -on -one, just between me and another person. Sometimes a student, sometimes a teacher, sometimes a parent. So one day in the guidance counselor's office, I just, uh, it was on me so much. I just reached up and closed the door and walked around to her and said, can I pray for you? And she just melted. She just melted. 
That is what we want to be, ladies. Men that are listening to this, that's what you want to be too. And then I want to end up today with the Proverbs 31, lady. You need to read verses 10 through 31, but time is short. So I'm going to just name a verse and kind of explain the key points to you. In verse 10, this woman, her price is far above rubies. She's a valuable asset. She's of great worth. She's of great worth to her family. She's of great worth to her children and her husband. She's of great worth in the community. She is of great worth in her church. Everywhere she goes, she's an asset. That's a challenge for you and me. Everywhere we go to be an asset, to be a positive, to be an enhancer and an enrichment. Not to be a detriment. In verses 11 and 12, it talks about the heart of her husband and how he can trust in her. And how he can have faith in her to do the right thing. Because she is totally sold out completely to the Lord. And later on, I think it's like verse 23, putting it in my own words. It's like the other fellows in the community think he's a lucky dog because she's his wife. Because they know, they see the fruit in her life. And that's what you want to have happening. You want people in the community, people in your church, people at your workplace, your children to see the fruit of the Spirit and to know that you are trustworthy and that you love God and that you want to do His will and to do what's the best. In verse 13, it said she worked willingly. She didn't feel like a second-class citizen because she was taking care of the home, because she was making the clothes, because she was planting or, or, or harvesting her little garden. She didn't think that made her less. Whatever God has appointed for you, whatever this season brings for you, it's not because you're less. It is your appointed time. Seasons come and go. Your children may be four and five and six and seven now, but there's going to be a day they're 15, then they're going to be 20. They're going to get married. They're going to move away. And sooner or later, hopefully, I hope you have the great joy of being a grandparent sometime. It's amazing. It's wonderful. You know, I joked and kidded and said I could have jumped over mamahood and went right into grandmotherhood to being a granna. But I wouldn't take anything for my two. Honestly, I wouldn't. But still, the point is, what is the season? It is not, you're not on the back burner. Now, you may be on the back side. Remember how we talked about last week, David was over in the back hills as a shepherd. He might have been on the back hills, but he wasn't on a metaphorical back burner of the stove because he wasn't important. He was in training. And then verses 14 and 15 says she provides food for her family. And you know, in my Bible, I had written, I don't know if I read it somewhere. I don't know if God gave it to me. And I don't know if I heard a preacher preach it, but it was there. It talked about physical food, but it also talked about spiritual food. You know, yes, just as important as three good meals for your family every day and a good snack that includes chocolates, always, always a good thing. I'm just saying, you know. But not only the physical food, the spiritual food, pouring into your children, letting them see your heart and your love for God, teaching them, guiding them, helping them to grow. That's important in your home. It is true. The the husband is the head of the household, but there are so many households that does not have a husband. And so then the wife, sort of the lady that's left, has to rise up and and take that position and take that place. And so you want to not just feed your kids physical food. They need that to stay alive, but that's not enough. That's not going to get them to heaven just because they eat their all their potatoes and green beans. It is the spiritual food that you pour into their life. Verses 16 through 19 just talks about her being a diligent worker. Verse 20 talks about her reaching out to the poor and needy. Here she was. You'd say, man, it sounds like her plate was pretty full to me. She's making clothes. She's doing this and that. She's planting the crops. She's keeping the house clean. She's, you know, making sure everybody's fed physically. She's being a spiritual rock in the family. And now you tell me she's reaching out. Yes, I do. 
That's exactly what the word of God said. She reached out to the poor and to the needy. And we need to be spiritually attuned to reach out. Things can come just as part of conversation or, or somebody sharing a prayer request or, or whatever. Things can just come your way. And as a child of God, you have to be sensitive to that. 21 and 22, make sure her family has the clothing they needed and also herself. And if you read about her clothes, she looked pretty good. She wanted to look nice for her husband. She wants to look nice for her children. She wants to be some, someone who, who, um, brings respect to, to the family and admiration, not in a negative way. And then it talked about in 25 that strength and honor are her clothing. Now, she does make clothes, and, and the scripture tells us that. But this, I think of as spiritual clothing. And every day I can see her when she gets up. And, you know, in the New Testament, it talks about putting on the helmet of salvation and, you know, the full armor of God. Well, I can see her in strength and honor every day. She picks up, and she that is part of of her spiritual clothing that she wears every day. And it says in 26, when she opens her mouth, it's with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. So not only does she try to look well in the physical, every single day she is putting on strength and honor and kindness and wisdom. And she has been an example she does a good job of taking care of what is in her realm to take care of her family. She uses her time well. She's not a, a loafer. I mean, if she doesn't have anything to do, she's the kind of woman who will find something to do uh, that blesses people around her. Her husband and her children speak highly of her and they praise her. And then 29 through 31, it says, A woman... That the Lord, that feareth the Lord shall be praised. And then in my Bible, I wrote this, that um, verses 10 through 31 is an acrostic format based on the Hebrew vocabulary, which would be like our A to Z, you know, Alpha and Omega. She's everything that a woman could be, the ideal, perfect. She has interests outside the home, but everything she does outside the home complements the person and her work ethic, and everything within the home. So, you may say, Vicki, I could never do all of that. You just walk it day by day. You walk it every day. You you fill your tank up with the Word of God. You spend time in prayer with Him. You ask Him, just like Jabez did, to to bless you. And broaden your your borders, make you aware that you can help others, and, and and ask God to put His hand on you. Ask the Holy Spirit to to lead you and to guide you. Um, God has promised to put His angels round about you, to camp about you, to keep you from even dashing your foot on a stone, guys. Meaning ladies or men, you've got this as long as your heart is pure before the Lord. And when things are rough, if you're going to fall, fall toward the altar. Don't fall away from God. Fall toward God and let him know how much you depend on him and how much you need him. You know, there's an old hymn that says, I need thee every hour. And if you have to pray hourly, if you have to whisper a little prayer every hour, God help me. I've been in situations like that, that it seemed like I was constantly having to just whisper a little prayer. You know, sometimes the day may hold so much you may think, I, I, I just can't even think of the day. Well, then break it down to an hour. This hour, God. Help me be an obedient servant. Help me be willing to follow the plan and the path that you've laid for me. Help me be an observant person that cares about other people. The Bible says, love the Lord God with all your heart. And the second commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? Well, 
It's anybody in your your realm of um, where you walk and talk and live and work and play. It's anyone that you can touch and help. And in because of technology now, your your reach can go to Africa or to India or to Mexico. So we it is vast. But what I challenge you to do today is to be all you can be for the glory and the honor of God. Never to bring attention to yourself and to seek and crave praise for yourself. But rather that everything be done for God in His glory. There was really